Good evening, friends. Uh, on behalf of WISCOMP, it is a privilege and a pleasure to welcome you here. And it is an added privilege to collaborate with the India International Center at this event to discuss and also release Dr. Sushma Bhatnagar's latest book, Niravadhi Bhuvaneshwar. A very special acknowledgement to our director, Mr. Kailash Srivastava, and our librarian, Dr. Usha Munshi, without whom none of this would have been possible. And also a, a heartfelt thanks to Mr. Harendra Tiwari of Hans Prakashan, the publisher of this very timely volume. It is a travesty, really, to speak here in English. And I seek your indulgence. In Shresht Vidwanu ke ki sabha mein, mein apni tuti phuti hindi mein bolne ki jurat nahi kar sakti. So I seek your indulgence. And we are truly privileged and grateful to have such an eminent panel here. Uh, the prolific, iconic Mrinal Pandey, who quite literally needs no introduction. I'm in the midst of reading her really fascinating book called Sahila Re, and I would really recommend it to, to all of you. It's one of the most beautiful books I've read lately. Uh, Mr. Jamshed, former bureaucrat, author, poet, columnist. We have the Hindi... Sahitya Academy Awardee, Professor Pavan Mathur, well-known author, and he, he's also actually a, a, a professor of chemistry, but strides so many disciplines with such ease and felicity. Uh, Dr. Manju Mukul, professor at the University of Delhi, and a dear friend of the author. And of course, we have the inimitable and charming media person, Jasleen Vora who will conduct the proceedings. This is uh, Sushma's fourth or fifth book. I think it's her fifth book. And she's always self-effacing and always hiding her light under a bushel. And in the nearly five decades that I have known her through her prolific writing, I have never ceased to be in awe of her undying passion. Indeed, I should say romance and profound understanding of literature across languages, be it Hindi, English, or Urdu. How she could unpack words, excavate hidden cadences, make the vague come alive with resonances not articulated before, with such refinement and a kind of capacious heterodoxy. She breaks rigid silos and boundaries she always shunned, and, and whether of thought and articulation, she, uh, she always sought really to unravel the abandon and the dance of the many contours of expression. And this has been a sort of lifelong passion uh, for Sushma. And perhaps that was what drew her to the iconoclastic Bhuvaneshwar, who rose like a meteor in the firmament of Hindi literature only to be burnt, spent, and forgotten. We never learned about him or his work from our Hindi textbooks, at least not when I was a student, which was not that long ago. Uh, was the erasure deliberate, or was it based on a lack of comprehension of ideas whose time had perhaps not yet come? I asked Sushma, what was the allure that Bhuvaneshwar held for her. Who was this man who left or rather disappeared from an unloving home in his early youth where, and whose talent and genius was recognized and, and by, by Munshi Premchand himself, who, pet, who was his patron, who was unwittingly caught in the crosshairs between the Premchand followers and the Nirala camp of Hindi, versus Urdu, of Hindustani, versus English, who was neither a classicist nor a romanticist, who was with the progressive movement, but not of it, was neither Marxist in a true sense, who abjured labels of all kinds, 
rejected dogma of every hue? Do the labels of feminist, which, which uh, Sushma has sought to ascribe to him, or deconstructionist, or even modern postmodernist, fit for these isms came much later, much after his time? Was he an anarchist? Was he a nihilist? Was he existentialist? He has often been perceived as a, a kind of a bohemian, a vagabond, uh, an upstart. I think Nirala referred to him as an upstart. Even as mad, he was perhaps an alcoholic, a melancholic, even schizophrenic. Too influenced, they said, by Western ideas. He loved English literature and I think he wrote several poems in English, if I'm not mistaken. And he always carried D.H. Lawrence with him in his pocket, I'm told. So 100 poems in English, Sushma, 100 doodles, several one-act plays, several stories, but lost to obscurity. Whether Quixotic or not, it was also said of him, Hindi ka Ibsen, jo ek vikshit bikari ka moth mara. He died in penury of hunger and illness, in a community of beggars, the wretched of the earth, as Fanon would say, unmourned, unsung, his body was perhaps not even claimed. Sushma Bhatnagar attempts to lift him out of the obscurity to which he was tragically and posthumously cast. And if I know Sushma and her striving, I can claim some familiarity with that over the decades. This book, I feel, is an attempt to resurrect Bhuvaneshwar and make him come alive to young readers and aficionados of literature. It was only perhaps in the 70s that uh, Tambe Ke Kire and other works were published, if I'm not 70s. wrong, 70s. And she attempts to spur an excavation of his lost works to shine the light on his constant engagement with shattering the myths and the untruths that we live by to his relentless criticism of the veneer of hypocrisy that erodes human uh, relationships and the yoke of expectations that weigh heavily on us. And he once said that the biggest tragedy of life is the tragedy of earning a living. And we are all familiar with that. His refusal to accept that the independence of 1947 was genuine freedom. I think Azadi Kinin is one such statement. His quest to give a kind of voice to that which could not be heard or was rendered inaudible and invisibilized. But above all, my own senses, and I've never studied Bhuvaneshwar, that Sushma's project or engagement is one of rectifying epistemic injustice that rendered us all the poorer by silencing a potent rebel, a stormy petrel, who believed in constantly holding the mirror up to society and questioning received wisdom. But Sushma's invocation of Bhavabhuti in her dedication leaves us with some hope because it is really about the fact that both time and space are limitless and boundless. To kabhi na kabhi, kahi na kahi, koi na koi to aayega. Perhaps that is the new dawn that this book is calling out to. But we must hear that from the author herself.